The first Looney Tunes cartoon to be released was Sinking in the Bathtub, which depicted Bosco, a Negro boy with a very defined blackface dialect. In 1941, All This and Rabbit Stew aired showing a black hunter with big lips, ragged clothing, and a limited vocabulary being outwitted by Bugs Bunny. The public found the character to be racist, and he was reanimated as Elmer Fudd. Cartoons reflect the times. In the 1930s and 1940s, it was common to stereotype non-white minorities. The next clip shows some of these stereotypes in early Looney Tunes cartoons. My Uncle Sammy, here comes the freedom man. boy, I'm from South Germany. Looney Tunes used propaganda in World War II to rally American society against Axis powers. Next is a clip entitled Tokyo Yokio, portraying American ideology toward the Japanese. And I, Yamamoto, will dictate peace time in the White House. Uh. World War II did not leave the 1950s in a peaceful wake. Many wars followed in its footsteps. The United States tried to extinguish any combustion of communism. According to us, parts of the world were burning with corruption, and we needed to aid those who fought for capitalism. The Korean War put conflict between capitalism and communism into sharp relief by pitting North and South Korea against one another. The military engagement during the ill-fated foray in Vietnam was of similar effect to the Korean War. Speedy Gonzales was created in a 1953 cartoon episode called Cat Tales for Two and lasted up until 1999 when Cartoon Network took over. The Hispanic community welcomed Speedy and found him amusing and clever. Speedy was also created in the prime of the Hispanic immigration into the United States. The next clip shows your, quote, typical Mexican, unquote, Slowpoke Rodriguez. That's what I wanted to tell you. Slowpoke Rodriguez, he pack a gun. <laughs> Although Speedy Gonzales was loved by Mexicans and Hispanics worldwide, he was also taken offensively and presented negative implications of Mexicans, such that all wear excessively large sombreros, um, all have white onesies and bandanas, and they all have strong accents. But does uh, Hispanics loving his character make it acceptable to air his episodes? Maybe the issue doesn't lie in the stereotypes, but rather the lack of leadership that comes from the Hispanic community. The media presents very limited images of Latinos, and most of what have not been flattering. Who is that? I never see him before. He's the biggest mouse I ever did see. That's no mouse, that's El Gato. Quick, it's El Gato. Run, run. It's the pussycat. Run, run, run. Quick. El Gato. The Horse Hair. This was part of the Censored 11 presented in 1960. Um, there is only two main reasons why this actual piece was taken off of the air. And it was the fact that they referred to a Native American as an engine. And then there was one point when Bugs was saying, uh oh, sorry, that one was a half breed. The look of Bugs Bunny has been evolving for many decades due to many different artists and directors. Now it is time for major changes in storylines as well. Looney Tunes is now being viewed in homes around the world through the use of television and is becoming increasingly popular with young children. The need to tone down the violence, questionable behavior, and inappropriate stereotyping of characters has become necessary. Typical portrayals of certain ethnic groups such as Latinos, African Americans, Asians, Native Americans, Jews, and the assumption that all Germans were Nazis was misleading and now under scrutiny. Censoring of these often unflattering stereotypes needed to be edited or removed altogether to maintain their ability to reach new audience as well as to be politically correct and to appease its old audience. In December 1983, 
This article was published in TV Guide regarding the obvious censorship CBS was doing to this beloved cartoon. The public reaction was mixed, however many could agree that the children would be influenced by incorrect stereotypes through the cartoon's racial depictions. Here's a bird's eye view at the prominent history from the 1990s till now. By 1990s, the censorship was taking over as libraries expunged their racist imagery from the 20th century cartoons and a closer review of cartoons was in action with Speedy Gonzales being a point of topic. In 1996, Space Jam teetered with racism through the movie as it even showed Michael Jordan in a slave situation and used Bill Murray's character as a positive white male figure. In 1999, Nickelodeon and Kids Network and ABC stopped airing the Looney Tunes as they were then featured in other shows like Tasmania, Sylvester and Tweety, and the Tiny Tunes. In 2000, Warner Brothers gave Cartoon Network exclusive access to the Looney Tunes library as they started airing the Looney Tunes again. By 2003, the attempt at recreating a cleaner Looney Tunes was done through movies Looney Tunes Back in Action and Bah Humduck, A Looney Tunes Christmas. But this did not stop the Looney Tunes from going off the air for a while. In 2009, Cartoon Network aired the Looney Tunes again, but it was short-lived and back off the air by 2010. In 2011, a production of a newer Looney Tunes started airing with Bugs Bunny and Daffy Duck out of the woods and in the suburbs living with colored neighbors. I think the media is a mirage used to bait society further into the desert basin of control. This tool has been used since the time of antiquity and probably is inevitable when trying to rule a city. However, as when this tactic is focused through a child's medium, when the grievous line of humanity seems to be crossed, this oppression by brainwashing, and it's ironic as you watch these cartoons that you realize you're watching propaganda aimed at children about propaganda cartoons aimed at children. Surely, even the most patriotic lunatic would agree that Donald Duck, wandering through a jungle with a knife, waiting to stab the next Japanese soldier, is purely maniacal. Today the loons still linger, but my advice? Just stay vigilant to the images your kid sees on TV. Back home, folks.